Yo guys and welcome to another fast paced review video. This one on the Oremo, don't know if I'm saying that right, Monster 100 electric bike. Uh, yes, we've done lots of electric bikes, but they all seem to be a little bit different. This one's got some tricks up its sleeve. Uh, it came packaged very securely and properly in that package over there. And I didn't find any damage at all to the frame or components on it. Everything's looking pretty tight. Now here's a glance at everything that came in the package. And the first thing I noticed is the wheels. These are 26 inch, but not the fat tires. They're actually 2.1 wide versus usually you see like four inch tires on this size bike. So I kind of like that uh, because I hopefully we'll be able to get decent range out of it. Now the, the battery though is, is fairly small. It's a 468 watt hour, a 13 amp hour at 36 volts. And it's really lightweight. It's got the key on the side of it and it's fully charged. I pulled this out last night, charged it up in the house. Uh, charger is a 42 volt output at four amps or 168 watts. And I guess we'll just kind of jump in here and show you guys everything at once. You see, it did come with the bolts for the rotor that you have to put that on. Let's see if that has an arrow indicating which way. Well, we'll just go ahead and match it up to the rear one for direction wise, but those do have Loctite on the bolts. Pretty heavy duty looking seat, a lot of cushion there, aluminum post. Owner's manual, we'll go through that at the end. A two year warranty card. You have the reflectors, some tools, derailleur bracket, left and right pedals, and then the front axle, and a bell. Here's their email and phone number. I did go to the website, and there's not much there. So, kind of a newer company, but maybe that will change by the time I put this video out. Now, these front forks do not have a lockout or adjustable preload. Uh, I do like the stem on it, so the stainless steel hardware, and this is adjustable. So if you want to tilt it up or down, it's got cable actuated disc brakes on the front and rear, and kickstand in the back, which is nice. I hate when they're up here. Only a 350 watt hub motor in the back with your standard Shimano seven speed cassette. However, it's got three speeds up on the front. So this is a full 21 speed bike. This will be the first time I've seen that on the bike. Uh, don't know why they all don't have it. I did just notice this wire is awfully close to that ring gear. Advertised net weight is 48 and a half pounds with a payload of 308 pounds and an advertised range of 32 to 45 miles. Generally, I see about half that doing full electric rides, which is how I always test these bikes going on the flats. I'm 180 pounds, six foot two. Let's get this thing together and go for a ride. Start by securing your front rotor, which does have an arrow indicating counterclockwise and 160 millimeter etching on the, on the outside. Let's go good and tight on those six screws. And then insert your front quick pin, whatever it's called. You've got one spring on this side and the other spring and nut go on the other. And take your stem and face it forward. Now it's perfectly straight with the forks. Tighten down the two pinch bolts. Make sure you alternate evenly between the two and gradually tighten it down. Take this clamp off, throw your bars on. Just make sure the cables are routed properly. I do like that it's got this little cable guard on here to keep everything nice and tight. And put this clamp back on, make sure it's centered and secure these evenly in a cross pattern. Making sure you got even spacing on the top and bottom. There's no markings on this bar to see if it's centered. I just kind of eye it up, but I'm gonna leave them loose for now until we get the wheel on. So we remove the dummy axle, and drop it into place, making sure that the rotor slips in between the brake pads. When you're seating it, make sure your wheel, you know, push down on the bars and seat your wheel fully in there. I, I don't really love the way this looks at the bottom and you don't have the lock washer with the little tang to, to grab in there in case this, this thing fails or loosens up, but I don't know, it seems good enough. So again, making sure the axle's fully seated into the forks, you fold this over. You shouldn't be able to do it with one finger like that. If you're able to, then you gotta, you know, spin down the nut on the other side a little bit more. And when you tighten this, it should have a fair bit of resistance, but not so much where you're gonna break it. <laughs> and sometimes people like to push these so that they're facing backwards. But, okay, good enough. And put the reflector on and drop your seat in. And then tighten down your reflector wherever you want. I'll just leave mine tucked up. I do have the seat at the highest setting you get the marks on the back now we can sit on the bike and adjust the bars and i guess i do have this seat a little too high it seems like a pretty small frame on this huh i mean being six foot two i feel like this is not going to be ideal for me yeah, but you take your six mil allen loosen a bolt under here and now we can tilt the bars wherever you know you feel comfortable or tilt the stem should i say 
And once you have more you want, you secure down that six mil, tighten that all down. Now it looks a little goofy the way they are, uh, tilted all the way up, but I was sitting on it, it seems pretty comfortable. So I'm gonna roll with that for now. I don't know, definitely uh, not a great angle. I got it turned all the way up to the, the 50 degree mark. Finish up by putting your pedals on, lefty tidy on the left side and righty tidy on the right side. Bolt the derailleur guard on, and two supplied bolts. Drop the bell on. Don't forget the front reflector. And finally, let's drop this battery into place. Once you click it down, you can turn and remove the key to lock it into place. On the right side, you'll find a power button. Hit that up. And I'd say I don't like how this battery's mounted. It's kind of weak, unless I don't have it on there fully. Maybe I don't. No, it's just kind of a not great system. Well, I guess we'll find you guys know I'm pretty rough when I ride these. We'll find out how it does. And there's a glance fully assembled. Definitely small for a 26 inch wheel bike. Measurement from crank to seat post on the frame 15 inches. So let's see how I look on it. It's compact. But pretty lightweight. I mean, compared to a normal e-bike, if this thing actually gets 15 miles, I will be shocked. Well, I just noticed this seat has a little air bladder and a pump. You can pump it and get some extra padding depending on your uh, preference. And then there's a relief valve right there to, to drop it down. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that before. To turn the display on, you hold this power button for a second or two. And let's see, so you got one through five power assist and back to zero we're showing five bars on the battery just a pretty basic interface that that flashing you might see on the that's not there that's just the camera frame rate doing that you definitely got to tighten down the brake some you got two adjustments micro adjustment up here or for your main adjustment you just come down on the bottom loosen that allen pull some more cable through real self-explanatory stuff and bare bones basic so i'm going to do that and then set my tires up to 40 psi and check all the other nuts and bolts which i always recommend doing before going to ride god forbid a axle's left loose or something and then uh yeah we'll go oh there's a mr gus it's hey birthday. yeah happy one year birthday buddy he got lots of toys to play with gotta go for a pee pee <laughs> yes it's your birthday gus it's your birthday you're not a puppy anymore are you Gotta run this little bugger all the time. <laughs> How's it feel? Yeah, it feels good. It's a small frame, so for you it'll probably be good. For me, I might be knee jamming on the bars. These are adjustable too. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a little test spin. See you, see you in a bit, Gus. It's gonna be dark very soon, but whatever. Let's give this thing a range run and see what happens. Uh, so I was reading a little bit in the booklet. If you wanna do the walking, you hold the negative button down and then that's your, your push feature for like pushing the sub steps or a steep hill. And then cycling through, you just use the power button. You got odometer, speed, trip. And I don't know if this is in kilometers or miles an hour. I didn't see a way to change that, but we'll find out soon. I just set Matt my run on my phone, so we'll find out how accurate the odometer is. I love that it's just a 21 speed. Look at it. Climbing hills right now, you got nice gearing. You put that up on the top ring gear. Run this up to number seven. The, the shifting's nice and smooth. I haven't had to, I didn't have to make any adjustments. You know, on the left side, I like when it's this fine adjustment clicker. It's not just like a one, two, three, because then you don't really have to have it adjusted. It's just either plus or minus. You set it wherever it's not clicking. And so we got it on zero assist right now. You hit that negative, you see the zero. I'm going to go to plus one. I don't really feel anything. There's two. I'm starting to feel a little bit. Oh, there's three. Kicked in nice. It's good power assist. Four came in abruptly. And five. So I'm just, all you gotta do is rotate your pedals and it'll bring you up to the top speed. This thing definitely has some pep for a 350 watt and it's probably because it's a, a pretty lightweight bike with skinny tires. Uh, when you stop pedaling, there is a, a fair bit of delay, which I'm not a fan of. It's, it's like a solid second where the bike will continue to go. Let's see if I hit the brakes, if that stops it. Probably not, let me, let me see. Okay, yeah, so if you 
if you tap the brakes, it, it kills the power immediately. Even though this doesn't have any lights, no brake light or headlight, which is unfortunate. And I do apologize for pointing the camera down at the ground a bunch. I'm just trying to show you these few things uh, before we, we just lay down these miles. But with this down on zero, you just pedal like a regular bike. And this is the best pedaling electric bike I've ever ridden. The, the large fat tire ones and the small tire ones, they just really lug when you don't have the power assist on. However, if you do have it on the zero assist, just pedaling along and you need a quick boost, you can grab the throttle at any point and it's always gonna have the power. You don't have to be in a gear for that to work, which I really like, because a lot of bikes, you have to have it in first gear for, for the, the hand throttle to work. At this point, we're down on the path, gonna hold her wide open and keep it that way until the battery runs out. So there's full acceleration, no pedal. I'm not gonna really be pedaling at all. As I said, we're I'm just doing full electric to see the range. Hoping for 15, but I'm guessing it's gonna be more around 10 miles. We'll see, it's kind of a small battery but it is a lightweight bike. So we are approaching that 20 mile an hour top speed, so this must be in miles an hour on here. On Ulysses GPS app, indicating an exact 20 mile an hour, so that's very accurate. Hopefully the odometer is the same. Now, if you don't feel like holding the throttle, we can, I'm gonna put the power assist up on number five, and then let's see, if I just start rotating, the pedals without even doing pedal assist it should take over and i can let go yep let go of the throttle and that's all you gotta do is rotate those pedals however since it has a 21 speed i'm in a top gear let's see if i go ahead and apply power with my legs yes that's a good ratio so, so sometimes on these e-bikes your legs are spinning way too fast to apply any any power assist at 20 mile an hour but this one i can i can basically fully take over and i hear the whine of the motor go down so that would increase our range by i mean <laughs> indefinitely really if you just pedal real hard the whole time and then if you hit a hill let the motor take over but it's got that gearing dialed in just right and i mean look at this winter it's just so gloomy and gray out the grass is brown and gray a little bit of green it's the, the canal is brown it just looks crummy it's getting dark sure picked a good day for this ride huh Let's see how she rides no hands at top speed. Again, I'm gonna just keep rotating the pedals, but I'm not adding any power since we're doing a full electric. So, yep, feels nice geometry, nice and straight, going where I want it to go. You usually get that with, you know, with the smaller wheels, sometimes they get real squirrely, but you get the 26 inch wheels and they ride straight. Every once in a while though, I'll see a 26 inch wheel bike and I guess the rake's off on the fork or something on the frame and a, uh, they don't track straight at all. Right, here's probably the only hill on this ride. It lugs, lugs a little bit up that. Remember, I'm, I'm about 180. Here comes the second hill. This is the only hill on pretty much this entire ride. I'm not gonna do any pedal assist. Let's see what it drops down to. Oh yeah, she's lugging. That 350 watt motor that brought it down to 11 some odd miles an hour. Passing by the old U Pull It junkyard. This place is now vacant. Some of you might recognize it though. It's actually here not too many years ago. Taking some drone footage of it and it was full of cars still. It's more like the you dump it now. Bunch of trash just left over. All right, let's hit the trail. Oh, here comes the train. Woo, there it goes. Amtrak. So we are 3.7 miles in and have just dropped down to four bars. Oh yeah, so it always goes back to speed. If, if you hit trip or odometer, it, it goes back to speed within like two seconds. Anyway, I will talk to you guys probably next when the battery goes dead, unless the, the bike breaks, because it, again, it's, it's getting pretty dark and you guys probably can't see much. I sure am glad I brought my trapper hat because it is getting cold. Of course, it's a great idea to wear a helmet, guys. You should always wear a helmet riding a bike, unless you're a dummy like me. Hopefully if I fall, I'll just end up in the canal though. With our train. Stunning red sky tonight. Six point seven miles, we just dropped down to three bars. We 
you just roll over to 10 miles down to two bars and on that my run we're showing 9.5 miles so pretty accurate odometer compared to some of the other ones i've seen in the past 13.5 miles just dropped down to one bar and it's a one bar flashing we'll see how much longer that goes it's still holding 19 mile an hour so pretty decent and she finally quit at 19.1 miles so that's really decent for this size battery and again it's because it, the bike's lightweight we were only holding 20 mile an hour some of the, the bikes that do 25 28 mile an hour that they, they lose a little bit of range because of that and it wasn't until like the last half mile or so where it really started to lose power and just drop off immediately it's kind of doing laps around bristol because i wanted to end up at finney mcgee's pub my favorite little spot to grab boneless wings and a quick brew so i'm going to do that and then probably catch the train back to trenton so it's just like made it to the train station faced with 33 steps to get up to the platform but no problem with a 48 pound bike can carry it right up with one hand of course when the train does come there's going to be steep steps up onto that because this is not a raised platform however i just missed the train so it's going to be another hour maybe go do some pedaling and exercising We've made it back home and now for my final closing thoughts on this bike. Is it a good buy? I'm not sure because I don't know what the price is yet. To kind of recap on the video, the things I like about the bike, the 21 speed, very simplistic, super lightweight, excellent range for that 13 amp hour battery. I mean, I was kind of blown away by the 19 miles out of it without any pedal assist. If we were pedaling, I'm sure we could have doubled that, no problem. Now, when I was riding this around without any pedal assist, I gotta say it was very refreshing having the skinnier tires and the lightweight because you, you barely know this is an electric bike. I was able to average 15 miles an hour without any problem at all. You try doing that on a fat tire bike, it's gonna wear you down. I like the cable disc brakes over hydraulic because they're just a lot easier to fix and in my opinion, more reliable. Uh, I did have a slight squeal. I don't know if you guys heard it at any point in the video, but that was because I had these a touch too tight. I loosened up the adjustment and, and that went away. Now for some things I don't like about the bike. Uh, the bell, kind of cheesy, could definitely be better quality. The lack of front and rear lights is unacceptable in my opinion. Every electric bike should have bare minimum some kind of lights on there. You got no rear or front fenders, so if you're riding on trails, you're going to get stuff flinging up on you or what they call that, a rooster tail on your back. I mentioned how I didn't like how floppy the battery was, but I did go down a set of stairs at the Trenton train station and a seven stair over in Bristol and didn't have any problems with it falling off, so it seems to be on there good enough. Oh, I did want to show you guys on this trip. Remember I said when you ride, that just keeps going back to speed. Well, if you're stopped, it'll stay on either the trip or odometer, but as soon as you go ahead and spin that wheel, within like a second or two, it will go back to the speed. There it goes. To reset the trip, you hold the minus and power button for two seconds. And there you go. This bike does shut down automatically after 10 minutes of non-use, or you could just hold the button for two seconds, or of course, turn it off on the battery. Otherwise, I don't got too much more to say, so I think I'll pull the battery out, put that on charge. I will let you know right here how long it takes before we get the green light. If you're looking for something top-notch with all the bells and whistles, this is probably not the bike for you, but if you're looking for a budget bike, it could work. Uh, so I want to thank you guys very much for checking out the video if you watch this far. I know a lot of time uh, some people don't like all these reviews and such, but hey, they keep sending me bikes, scooters, skateboards. I'm going to keep riding them and telling you what I think of them because I enjoy doing it, and uh, hopefully it's able to you know, help you guys make a decision on what electric transportation will work for you. I mean, tell you this, if you get a skateboard, scooter, or a bike, it's gonna change your life, uh, depending on where you live, especially inner city, it is super convenient. So at this point, I'll jump to that owner's manual, and just again, thank you very much for tuning in. See you guys in a future video very soon, or over on the main channel. All right, no nonsense, no hell, over out. Happy birthday, buddy. Did you have a good birthday today? You got lots of toys, yeah. And now for the exciting part, taking a look at the paperwork. I'm gonna to try to be real quick, so be fast on that pause button if you guys 
want to view what I'm showing you. All right, I got me like 20 pages or so. I'll just try to get one clear image. Hopefully that was good enough. I don't think that was a very important page. And I'll try to stop talking. You know, sometimes these manuals aren't available online, so this can be helpful. Um, otherwise, you know, again, hopefully you guys found some value in this video. Uh, once the nicer weather comes, these, these electric transport videos are a lot more fun. You know, head up to New York again soon, or if you have any ideas of places to go, let me know. Always all ears on that. You know, what's nice with going through this manual, too, is I'm sure that uh, there's things I forgot to mention or could have said wrong at any point, too. Uh, you know, so there's that. I'm actually reading a couple things as I look at this. I'm going to have to read back in this in a second. You know, if I was smart, I would just read through this manual before even doing these videos. But I think it's more authentic of an experience if you just hop on and go and put it together because then you... You run in, well, there's the specs. That's an important page. Uh, you run into, you know, nobody reads the manual. So you'll run into things that other people that would probably be running into. Keep exploring. I like that. And then this is for the uh, display. Uh, hopefully, I mean, it's a little bit smaller print, but hopefully you guys can kind of see that a little bit. Pretty simple display on it. You got some error codes there. Hopefully you don't get any of those. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful, guys. Thanks very much for watching.